to the other New York team that had two games this week. Hey, Anthony, uh, the Islanders had a whopping two games last week. Yeah. It was amazing. Yeah. It was astounding. And they did beat the Edmonton Oilers and the Buffalo Sabres for the only two games post-Christmas. They have not been getting the breaks as far as the schedule goes. <laughs> and it'll be their only games until January 13th. So before we even get into the rest of it, how about the the emergence of Noah Dobson and some of the other players, Anthony? Uh, yeah, you know, um, Noah Dobson uh, came kind of, you know, highly regarded when he was drafted. Um, you know, he's, he's a big he's, – he's, he's a big defenseman. Um, you know, he skates well. Uh, we all knew what his potential could be. And, you know, they, they brought him on very slowly to start his career. Um, you know, last year he got more responsibility. He became a regular pretty much. Uh, and this year, you know, over the last couple of weeks, he's really he's really got a lot more comfortable with showing his offensive side of the game. Um, you know, he, he's been racking up the points uh, to the point now where, you know, he's he's on pace for like 41 points. And, um, you know, that for a defenseman, that, that's great. You know, defenseman that scores 40 points is, is a wonderful thing for a hockey team. So if that's especially player, an Islanders defenseman. Yes. And if that's the player that he could develop into, which many people thought he would be. Um, that's just a win for the Islanders because it takes so much pressure off Pollock and Pellick. Um, and also what enables them is it just – it also kind of helps them out with trying to find that defenseman going into next year to, you know, to replace Nick Letty because now if Noah Dobson legitimately emerges into a top four defenseman along with, you know, Mayfield as the other guy, now you don't have to get like an elite defenseman. You could just get two quality – solid defenseman to round out your top six. Um, so his, his emergence means a lot for the Islanders, uh, not just this year, but long-term. Um, it just seems like he's playing with much more confidence. And anybody that knows hockey knows that usually young defensemen take longer to develop than, you know, a right wing center left wing or any, you know, forward position. So um, he's getting more comfortable and uh, I'm, I'm loving what I'm seeing. Um, you know, you mentioned some other guys, Wallstrom, we all know about him, his talent. Um, he's been, He's, he had started off hot, had a little bit of rut there in the middle. Uh, now he's been playing some pretty good hockey, but then he landed himself on COVID protocol. So um, he's out of it, so he should be back when they resume play. But uh, he's been good. Um, and the last guy, before I turn it over to you guys, is, you know, I kind of soured on, on Kiefer Bellows a little, but he's been getting more playing time. Um, and he's – we all known about his shot. He, he has a good – not as good as Wallstrom, but he's got a good release and a good shot. Um, and he's looked more comfortable, too, out there. I don't know if that just, you know, playing more has, has boosted his confidence or if he's listened to the coaches and fine-tuned some things. Um, but, you know, he's, he's really battled there. He's skated hard, and, you know, he's used his best asset, which is his shot. Um, you know, he's gone to the net, all things that the coaching staff wanted to see out of him. So, um, again, you know, I, I – kind of sour him before the season, but you know, if he can, you know, be a regular the rest of the year and, and at least show signs of being a guy that can, you know, score 20 goals in this league, I, you know, I would gladly take that. But um, in the last week or so, I like what I've seen from Kiefer Bellows. Felk. Yeah. I, I was going to say, this is definitely the best stretch of hockey of Kiefer Bellows professional career. I mean, it, it, just a couple of years ago in, in 2020, he had only nine assists in 52 games and then seven assists in 73 games the year before in Bridgeport. So that's 16 total assists in 100 in 125 games in the AHL. In this season alone, he has five assists in 14 games. And that's something that we didn't think was going to come for Keith or, Keith or Bellows. We thought that his stat line would look like a Cy Young winning pitcher. 20 goals, five, like Chris Kreider, something like that. Chris Kreider, yeah, well, Chris Kreider right now has, has 20 goals and he has uh, 11 assists for 30 points. So right. But sticking with Kiefer. Yeah. But it just amazing how Bellows has really turned his game around. And now if he keeps this up, he might be a piece that the Islanders are going to hold on to going forward instead of a guy that his ELC was just going to run out. He wasn't even going to be tendered. So uh, good for him. Noah Dobson is basically becoming, like Anthony said, what everybody thought he could become. 
It's happening now. It's happening every night. When I watch him play, there's a conviction to his game. There's everything that he does. There's a confidence level to it. He believes in what he can do and what he does in that ice. So when he takes over games like that and he starts making these plays and he starts making those rushes and skating through and between guys and, and taking the puck to the outside, making plays, there's there's something behind it. And, and that's really what it takes to, to take your game to the next level. So you're really – you're seeing what – Dobson will probably be become. I mean, I always said that he has a chance of being a number two defenseman. It looks like he's got a good chance of that. And, and it's coming, it's coming sooner than later, especially with the absence of Nick Letty. It's sorely needed. So And what will really help the Islanders is if Dobson becomes that steady um that performer for them, even offensively. Now you can pair somebody with them next year. Then Pollock and Pellick don't have to play every single minute of the game and now is right yeah yeah i mean and and that's one of those things that now you're looking at now you suddenly are a better team next season or maybe even later this season maybe they can get themselves back to at least being within shouting distance of the playoffs it's just still going to be tough because the of, of the numbers that we can go through on that one last thing though uh again i just going to mention what i've always said about keeper bellas you can talk about a first round guy that he is, I mean, his father was an NHLer. He had played great in the world juniors. Like, I just don't understand why it took the, the organization this long to get him here. But we're going to move on. Oh, wait, sorry, Phil, you have to. I was, was going to say, Barry Trotz is a bit of a pain in the neck when it comes to the young players. And yeah. I, I think anybody who, who follows the Islanders knows well enough that Barry Trotz is just really tough on these kids. And it, it's always tough for them to get the opportunities. And if they make the mistake, kind of like how David Quinn was, if they make the mistake, they're staple to the bench. And you can't be like that as a coach. It's not how you develop young players. So for these kids to finally be able to go out there and just play and not worry about having to be staple to the bench for every little mistake that they make, it's a blessing. It really is. I mean, it might it might suck for the Islanders to, to be where they are right now. At least they're within shouting distance. But, I, I mean, I, I, I think going forward, I think I would take that and the development of the young kids over being in a playoff spot and having these kids' development stifled. Yeah. But, I, uh, unfortunately, Anthony, as usual, whenever there's news with the Islanders for the last two months, ever since we said, can we get more news with the Islanders, it's not – Good news, because this is ridiculous what the New York Islanders have to deal with. And yes, uh, I agree with that. Yeah, they got to do something with Kyle Palmieri. Um, the road trip that they were about to go on is suspended. It was going to go to Seattle, Ved- uh, Edmonton, uh, Vancouver, and Calgary. And I can't help but say why, but we'll get into that in a minute. Uh, we'll do more on that in the bar talk when it comes on. But can really st- realistically, I'm not in, in, in 100% agreement that the Islanders have been a victim of circumstance. But could any team survive under the conditions the Islanders have been put through since November? I mean, it, it's it's really hard. You know, the, the stops and starts, um, you know, these, these guys are, are well-conditioned athletes. Um, so that, that part isn't a huge issue. But when you when you have to sit for as long as you do, um, it halts your momentum and it prevents you from getting in a real groove where you know where you're you're feeling good, um, and you can't really like it's it, well yeah I guess it all goes back to momentum. You you can't build any momentum when you're when you're playing and then you stop. I mean this is now what the well first in that 13 game road trip not even to do with COVID they just had two two kind of breaks where they played one game. And then they were off for five days. They played another game and they were off for another six. And then you had the COVID postponements. Um, and now this, which is a 13, but they played on the second and they don't play the 13th. Um, so that 11 was that 11 day layoff. I mean, that's, that's really, it's, it's just, it's not, it's not good for any team coach or player to have to go through that many. Um, and Trotz even alluded to it earlier, but it feels like, they they've started and stopped so many times. It's really hard to feel good about yourselves, and um, it just come. And this is a bad time, you know. They they finished December four two and four, which is you know which is good prior to what they were in November. Um, there was definitely progress, and you know they won their last two games. 
Uh, so maybe you start to feel like, okay, you know, you know, we're going to get, we're going to get rolling here again. Um, got some guys off of COVID, you know, Bovillier Parise came back, uh, you know, Ryan Pollock skating again. And it's like, you know, they're at a point now where maybe they start to believe inside that locker room. Well, you know, here's our time to, to make our run and, you know, and show that, you know, you know we're still the Islanders, you know, don't, don't discount us. Um, and now this, uh, and it sucks. Um, it's just, and it, I know we'll talk about Canada and the bar talk, but it's yep. not even because of, it's not even because of COVID they're doing it because there's, there are not enough fans that they're allowing right now. And, uh, to me, that's just, it's just, it's, I don't, Canada really needs to get their act together there because I don't, I, I don't, I don't get it, but, um, from, listen, from revenue, Stan wise, I mean, the, the league doesn't want these Canadian teams to lose money, so they're going to postpone these home games till later in the season when they can presumably um, have fans again. So uh, it just sucks that the Islanders came in a bad time, that they're, this is their Western Canadian road trip now, you know. Um, so it is what it is. It's out of their control, but it's definitely frustrating for a fan. I can imagine how frustrating it is for the team and the coach. Phil, last word on this. They've just botched everything with with the, not just the Islander situation, but with the whole COVID situation in general. It it's just Canada need like Anthony said needs to step their game up. This is just unacceptable. And it's 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 just that it's not the way schedules work. Like one of the goals of Mark on the road is going to be that I have to go to every single arena and go visit them and see the fans get the fan experience, get every, not just seeing Ranger games on the road, seeing any team on the road. So then let's say if I had those games scheduled, then I, I can't go to the game anymore because two, I think they have 250 in Calgary or something like that. There's one of those that are just so ridiculous. It's like, why bother having fans in <laughs> yeah, at all? Why yeah. bother at that point? Yeah. It's just glorified beer league then at that point. So then yeah. it's just, and if, and, and look again, and, and we're dealing with all the different numbers that are around here. So we're not talking about that. But if the goal is to get to zero, it's never going to happen. Yeah. So just be a little bit more realistic. And there's another point that I'm going to make with that when we get to the bar talk. So I don't the, the, fans the, out. Last, the, last, the last wrinkle I had that is, you know, some, uh, you know, Kevin Kerr's the Islanders' new beat writer suggested it. Um, it was talked about, like, I wonder if the league will at least try to reschedule some games for them in the meantime so I don't have this break. And, you know, Bill Daly said that he, he didn't envision that happening. And um, I just shake my head because why? I mean, why not at least try, even if even if it's only one game. Granted, one game in 11 days yeah. still is, isn't good. But So what least, are we going to have this season running on until September? You know, why not try to at least give them a game or two in the meantime? I mean. Right. And and, and they're, they're moving some games that are already existing right now. They moved the, fly, yeah. the, the Toronto game for the Flyers. I put up the, yes. the meme on our – uh, Instagram page today about trying to figure out what the Islander schedule is because also by the way that's not the way schedules work and if you think the 13 game road trip to start the season was bad wait till they reschedule the four West, West Coast ga uh, trip games likely after the Islanders three West Coast uh, or before the three West Coast trip games that they have next month and then you're talking about a seven game West Coast trip those players will want to kill themselves before it's over. So, <laughs> I, I, just again, good job, good the NHL. You, you, you're really. And by the way, thank you, Justin. You know who you are when I say that. That's so, our worst league. Uh, I'm and and I am fired up about this. And Anthony's so fired up that he left. No, he's he's probably coming right back in in a second. Um. So, what do you guys think out there in Islander country? Uh, can any team succeed under this? I mean. Even as even as uh, as as a hockey pundit, but as a Ranger fan, I'm kind of looking at the going. Jesus, I mean, enough is enough. It's too <laughs> much, man. It, it's just it, way too much. It's like when you watch somebody you want to see get their ass kicked, and it's on the level of Jared Leto in Fight Club. Then you then end up like, not not me. I, I I never wanted him to stop punching Jared Leto, but it's uh, it, it's like on that level. For it. If you like that video, we got a lot more. So check out any of these that are right over here. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.